DeFi insurance. How does it work and what does it offer? Have you been told by your friend, colleague, or even a random bot on social media that cryptocurrencies are the future? That if you invest in them now, they will give you multi-bagger returns in the coming decades? That may be true. But what many people fail to tell you is that any amazing investment opportunity does not come without risks. The returns from the investment go hand in hand with the risks. The higher the potential return from an investment, the greater the risk. So in these times, when you are flooded with information on new cryptos every day that will generate amazing returns, I'm going to explain to you how you can reduce the risks using crypto insurance. Make sure to stay until the end, as I'm going to tell you about five real insurance protocols that will protect your crypto investment. Before we discuss DeFi insurance, the most basic question is, do we really need it? Let's consider this. If someone tells me that Bitcoin will give me a 50% return in a year, then I will probably not fall for it. But if someone tells me that Bank of America will give me 4% returns in a year, I will probably believe it. If you're like me, that is more skeptical of the first option than the second, then you're on the right track. The more the promised return, the higher is the uncertainty of achieving that return. This uncertainty of return on investment is called the risk of investment. The risk is particularly high for new age opportunities like crypto. The opportunities in crypto aren't limited only to investments. There is an entire ecosystem of finance systems developed around cryptocurrencies and smart contracts, which includes lending and borrowing, trading, crowdfunding, etc. This ecosystem is called DeFi or Decentralized Finance. If you haven't already, I recommend you watch our video on DeFi or Decentralized Finance, which explains how it will revolutionize the financial system entirely by replacing the intermediaries like banks or even governments and helps people to connect directly with each other. But no matter how revolutionary DeFi is, it still conforms to the fundamental investment concept of the risk return trade-off. So while it is important to make money from your investment, it's equally important to reduce the risks. The higher the returns and lower the risks, the better is the investment. There are three broad categories of risk in any DeFi project. The first is the software at risk. DeFi protocols are software applications that run on the internet, generally with very little human oversight and often with millions or billions of dollars flowing through them. Like all software, DeFi protocols have two main software risks, coding errors or bugs that may cause the software to malfunction and security vulnerabilities that allow hackers to break in and steal funds from the protocol. DeFi runs on pieces of code visible to everyone, which means that technologically savvy people may exploit vulnerabilities in the code and run away with huge sums of money. As per one estimate, the number of funds lost in exploits of DeFi projects totaled $1.3 billion in 2021. The second is the token risk. Every DeFi investment involves certain cryptocurrency tokens. Like your money or any real life asset, it doesn't have any inherent value, only what people are willing to pay for it and its utility. So there's always a risk that the token may become instantly valueless mostly because of scams. One of the popular scams is Rug Pulse. It's a type of exit scam where perpetrators create a new token, launch a liquidity pool for it, and pair it with a base token like Ether. Simply put, a liquidity pool is a pool of new tokens and base tokens like Ether that enables investors to buy and sell the new token instantly. In Rug Pulse scams though, once sufficient people contribute to the liquidity pool, the new token creators dump their new token into the liquidity pool in exchange for a base coin like Ether. This will send the price of the newly created token to near zero, leaving investors like me with worthless crypto while the rug pullers walk away with a profit. Another scam is honeypots. If the price of a new coin only goes up and nobody seems to be selling it, it can be a sign that something known as a honeypot scam is going on. The Squid Game token is a recent example. The DeFi project attracted mainstream media attention due to its alleged association with a popular TV show. It rapidly rose in value shortly after launch, but the media quickly noticed investors were unable to sell any of their tokens. 
Eventually, the founders dumped their tokens and ran off with millions of dollars worth of Binance coins. The third is the fraud risk. Where there is money, there are scammers, and crypto is no stranger to frauds. One of the frauds involves phishing, in which a scammer pretends to be an official company to trick victims into revealing sensitive information. This type of scam is especially rampant in crypto. You can see a swarm of crypto scam bots on Twitter, Instagram, etc. Often these bots will direct you to a Google form asking you to enter your wallet seed phrase or other sensitive information, something you should never share with anyone. Another fraud is scam airdrops. Airdrops are when protocols distribute free tokens to members of the community, which are common in crypto, but not all tokens airdropped to your wallet are genuine. A recent DeFi scam, especially common on the Binance smart chain, tricks people into thinking they have suddenly received tokens worth thousands of dollars, but they aren't tradable on exchanges as there's no liquidity, and they ask you to connect your wallet through a shady website. Once you do that and approve access to a malicious smart contract, scammers can siphon funds directly from your wallet. In summary, there are several risks associated with DeFi, some more apparent than others. While you can control some of the risks, like not falling for fraudulent bots, there are some risks that you can't possibly protect yourself against, like software bugs or hacks. So this is where DeFi insurance becomes relevant. DeFi insurance refers to insuring yourself or buying coverage against losses caused by events in the DeFi industry. For example, Av is a DeFi protocol that enables people to lend and borrow based on smart contracts. So you purchase some Av tokens and lend them to someone else in the protocol. But you are aware that you might lose your capital if the Av protocol gets hacked or there is a bug in the smart contract where the borrower runs away with the money that you've lent. You want to insure yourself against this risk. You therefore go to a DeFi insurance provider and pay a certain premium to get covered in case you lose your capital due to specific reasons. The unique feature of DeFi insurance is that anybody can become an insurance service provider. Instead of buying coverage from a single person or company, through DeFi, you buy coverage from a decentralized pool of coverage providers. As a coverage provider, you choose for which events or protocols you want to provide coverage. You might, for example, be certain that a given exchange will not be hacked. You are therefore fine with providing liquidity or money to the pool which covers the potential hacking of the given exchange. Should the exchange be hacked, the funds in that capital pool will be used to cover the claims from people who bought coverage against a hack. Let's summarize all this. Simply put, DeFi insurance works as follows. You buy coverage against a specific event. By doing this, you are protected against capital loss due to a specific event. The premium you pay for this coverage depends on multiple factors such as the coverage duration, covered amounts, and the covered event. On the other side are coverage providers. They underwrite your risk, meaning that they cover you in case the underwritten event happens. Coverage providers therefore suffer risk and earn interest on the capital they provide. Anybody can act as a coverage provider. The most important part of any insurance is its claim verification and processing. So how is that done? Well, if you believe that you lost capital due to a covered event, you can file a claim. Different insurance platforms use different methods to verify claims. Often this is done by the community itself, which is set up as a DAO structure. In such a structure, holding the token associated with the insurance protocol gives you governance rights, meaning that you can participate in voting to accept or deny claims. Other times, the claim verification also happens in an automated way instead of by community voting. This is often done with the help of so-called oracles. Simply put, oracles are decentralized information mechanisms that verify external data. Oracles can be set up to accurately track the outcome of certain events and distribute this information across the internet. This can be useful for DeFi insurance protocols as chances of dispute will be minimized. Now that we understand what DeFi insurance is and how it works, let's look at one DeFi insurance protocol, Insurance Ace. And to be clear, this channel, CryptoScales, is in no way associated with this service. Insurace is a decentralized insurance protocol that protects DeFi investors and users against hackers, smart contract vulnerabilities, and any other bugs to try and make crypto safer for everyone. Insurace is built on four different chains, 
Ethereum, Binance, Polygon, and Avalanche, and covers 17 different public chains. This makes it one of the most widespread insurance protocols covering probably over 107 different DeFi protocols with over $230 million worth of coverage. It has its native token called Insure token, which has its initial DEX offering in March 2021. The holders of Insure can stake to vote on the different claims and other aspects of the business. So what does the future hold for DeFi insurance? The DeFi industry has a couple of trillion dollars in the crypto market, with about $250 billion worth of funds locked into DeFi at the moment. Of this, less than 2% is insured right now. In fact, the risk in DeFi are significant. There have been over $3 billion worth of hacks in 2021 alone, up from $120 million in 2020. Considering these numbers and the problem that it solves, the opportunity for DeFi insurance does seem massive. So what do you think? Would you buy insurance to protect your DeFi investments? I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button to show your appreciation for our efforts and consider subscribing to Crypto Skills so that you don't miss our next bite-sized explainer video on crypto. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.